Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Good evening, everyone. Let me get my hat on straight. Um, hopefully, you all can uh, see me well and everything. My uh, stream is not quite syncing up with um, the Team Viewer preview, uh, but we'll um, make sure everything goes smoothly. Let me know if anything happens if you can't see me. I tried to go through and kind of review uh, my streaming bit rate, you know, to see if there was a way to reduce some of the buffering. And it's a combination of my, uh, you know, my settings uh, and my internet, you know, pushing that uh, that that feed out, and then of course uh, you guys' settings uh, receiving the stream, how fast you your computers can download and, and run the streams. And it's a combination of both um, that causes a lot of buffering and things. And I was trying to see what I could reduce or change on my end to make it uh, better on your end. Um, and when I was trying some of the different uh, bit rates, uh, you know, uh, 480p, 1080p, because I'm streaming at 1080p, but, you know, 720p, um, the preview, the actual view of the screen... The Vetric screen and things like that was real blurry in the uh, other, um, the lower bit rates. So I'm trying to uh, figure out a better way to make everything more pleasurable for you, but also give you know the same quality, uh, you know, video that things aren't blurry when you're looking at them and stuff and all. So yeah, <laughs> Wayne, I'll try to shave. Um, I'll, uh, I'm trying to, you know, grow in that beard. I want to look like that rustic, uh, you know, Daniel Boone, pioneer kind of guy, Wayne. <laughs> um, so tonight we're going to look at, uh, some of the different ways that we can make very simple yet elegant looking wall clocks um you know a long time ago we did a clock class where we made some round wall clocks and things but i wanted to be able to utilize the uh the ability to use our like our v-carve toolpath uh without you know having to do 3d models and things and get really nice looking detailed uh bodies or styles for clocks and all and uh, I want to share some of these with you because I want to uh, maybe inspire you to go out and look at different ways that you could do these things because wall clocks are something that, that, that are popular uh, that, you know, that, that, that people would, uh, if you're potentially selling items and things that they would look at and really, really like. Now, of course, getting into the 3D models, getting into the 3D models of wall clocks where you can do some really ornate tight things uh, you can make some beautiful uh, beautiful clocks and stuff but I'm looking at it in a 2d aspect basically using our vectors and our combination of our vectors and our tool pass to get really unique looking um, clocks and designs uh, and uh, you know see what we can come up with so with that being said let's take a look at um, our Vetric software, let's kind of jump right in and uh, see what we can come up with. All right, so in the, oh, sorry, I hit the wrong button. In the Vetric software, 
we're going to go ahead and what you see here is a um, kind of all, I would guess you would call it kind of a flourish, floral design, what have you. Uh, and uh, I'm built, uh, designed this clock basically around the clock body, you know, the, uh, the clock body that I'm using. And for me, uh, I utilize uh, clockkit. Uh, dot com uh, k l o c k i t dot com and uh, clockkit dot com has a wonderful variety of uh, mechanisms clock inserts uh, you know compass inserts thermostats all, all kinds of different things uh, really a great supplier uh, for me anyway uh, very affordable on their uh, inserts and things and um it's just uh you know someone that i like to use now there, there's a lot of different suppliers uh for clock kits uh, uh whether it be the the working mechanisms uh or just the actual inserts where you know you have this full clock completely inserted in and i was looking i had this one pulled up on the screen um not just necessarily for its style but i wanted to show you on the inserts if I can uh, get this to uh, zoom in here so when looking at the uh, the clock kits the, especially the inserts and all what we have to look at is the C measurement you know the depth of cut which is basically the mounting depth you know how much depth of a pocket needs to be uh, created for this insert to fit into uh, the second thing is is the um, insert the diameter the mounting diameter uh, which is how what the diameter of our pocket needs to be and then of course we have the overall diameter which creates you know kind of that lip where the clock you know uh, face and everything is so the two measurements I'm interested in when I'm creating a design uh, depending on the kit that I bought is I'm looking at the depth of my pocket cut and the insert diameter those two things now for this particular clock if we look down at the specs it has a mounting depth of 9 16 of an inch so my pocket needs to be at least uh, at a minimum 9 16 but I usually give it a little bit more of a pocket depth so I have a little bit of breathing room in there the second thing that we want to look at is the mounting diameter of the clock of these inserts and all my overall diameter on this particular clock is two and three quarter inches uh, the mounting diameter the size my pocket needs to be is two and a half inches so I'm gonna have a quarter inch uh, lip basically for this face all the way around and so these two numbers are important to me uh, and um, all three of them are important to me but these are you know where we would look uh, in the additional info or details if we were on clockkit.com and we were looking for you know particular type inserts and and there's a lot of really uh, nice ones now some of the the clock inserts um, some of the clock inserts and things when you look at them they don't have the diagram you know a B or C what the measurements are but they do have the mounting diameter and then under additional info they have the overall diameter and then the mounting diameter so the depth of cut mounting depth sorry mounting depth uh, um, the depth of cut and then our pocket is the mounting diameter and then the overall diameter is this you know the full size of the clock so what I've got here is um, I've got a flourish that was traced we're gonna we're gonna start from scratch with this um, but my insert uh, my overall insert here in this is that two and a half inches and then I have an offset notice this clear white area around the outer perimeter of that offset where my vectors are kind of surrounding uh, that's that quarter inch where that face I want that face to kind of sit flush and um, so we're going to talk about you know creating those offsets and all uh, then we're going to look at uh, different ways to create our, you know, our boundary lines and um, and things for the final cutout, and then what type of uh, you know vectors that we can create to create you know kind of a stunning look. So if we were to look at this uh, particular uh, design 
in a in its cut preview um, you know this is what the clock overall would look like hanging on the wall now of course color choices would be whatever you want it to be um, but uh, this would be the overall clock with the um, you know the insert and everything in there and so all I did basically is you know add a little bit of color you know whatever it may be uh, just to kind of bring out some of the detail so you can see and you can go crazy with this if we were to look at if we were to look at um, uh, a, a variety of clocks that are out there on the World Wide Web you know uh, different style clocks and, and things uh, you can see very basic uh, you know clocks with nice flourish designs and this is a wall clock where the mechanism is purchased and it, you just uh, have a simple center hole and then your arms and stuff go in um, you can get more ornate uh, with a different type of you know three-dimensional type looks or even even this is a two-dimensional cut uh, you can you can do with a v-carve tool bath and you just have profile cuts cutting things out uh, you can get really lavish uh, in uh, the designs and all, um, no, no, you know, depending on what it is in things. And so, therefore, uh, the inspiration and all what came about on this is, is I like making clocks every once in a while. And I wanted to kind of share some of my methods and things. Uh, and one of my favorite uh, type of clocks is the kind of that V carb design. So if we were to look at this one here, this is just a very simple V carved uh, clock. And uh, it does have a little bit of a round over on the edges, uh, you know, and, and different things. Um, but that nice body shape, you know, how do, how would we get that, uh, body shape type things and these clocks, and these are wonderful representations on Pinterest and things that people have made some beautiful things. These are not, you know, um, uh, they're, they're not bad looking at all. And so I wanted to, you know, basically kind of, uh, just talk about the process and we're gonna we're gonna bring in some vectors we're gonna draw them we're gonna show how to cut them up and clean them up and trim them and things uh, for our inserts or for our boundaries and stuff and really make some really unique uh, you know time pieces and stuff uh, that we can do you know and not everything has to be 3d you know uh, if you don't have a spire and and you know don't have the ability to make 3d well you have all of the 3d models that came with the vetric software uh, that you could use um, and uh, you could combine and build and slice and dice those models to create uh, multiple things um, a lot of wonderful things that you can do but i want to focus on very simple bitmap tracing offsetting and uh, creating something unique so let's take a look at this one here let's go ahead and uh, create a new layer and we're gonna call this our uh, class layer and I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all of the other layers and let's look at how we would start that particular clock and then we'll move on to um, some others so the first thing I started off with was was an image a graphic and um, I have different types of graphics for you know different uh, representations and things uh, but this particular one is uh, one that I uh, enjoyed and uh, so we're going to kind of zoom in and the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, in my case I'm gonna do a black and white tracing and what I'm looking for is the best definition you know of the body I don't I'm not caring about the black one over here I'm looking at this design here and so for me around 50% uh, or or higher I want to kind of you know be in that realm you know 50% or higher I don't want to be down here where it's weak but I don't want to go as so far to where um, you know it starts to really get noisy and things. Uh, so 
I believe that I'm going to go with about a Seventy-three, you know, on the black and white little slider bar here, and I want my, I want to go real high. I want to be about nine pixels, uh, you know, on the noise filter. I want to filter out a lot of the noise that I can. Uh, I'm going to go with a, a standard default corner fit on the uh, tracing, and I'm going to preview that, and then I'm going to apply it, and then close that tool. Now if I come in here and I uh, turn the um, image off, I want to ungroup these guys uh, because this one here, I'm going to delete. I want it out of here because I want to focus on this one. And so I'm going to group it back together just so it makes it easier to work with. And let's get my whole board back into view here. Now I'm just going to you know, size it up, get it as big as I can and um, uh, let's go ahead and get it centered using the alignment tool and get that centered. I want to leave a little bit of room on the outset uh, because I am going to be offsetting uh, some lines and things. And once I get all my offsets and stuff out of here, uh, then I will, I will, uh, you know, make do my final size. Now my overall size. Let's kind of look at the back of the beginning here. Uh, this particular project is a single-sided project because I'm pocketing and I'm putting a clock insert in the face. Uh, we've got about 11 inches on the uh, width of the board, uh, 16 inches tall. I really actually don't need to be that tall, but I wanted to uh, be at 16 inches. And as we're looking at other designs, I might want some different, uh, you know, heights and things. Uh, but I'm working with a, a quarter-inch board now. If we want our clock to have a little bit of depth. Um, uh, you know, to it a little thickness and all. You can you can go with an inch and a half or something, which or an inch, you know, what have you. I'm going with a three quarter inch uh, style wall clock here. And so, uh, I will be working off of the material surface for the touch off and the bottom left corner for the starting point, the XY datum position. So my Z zero position is on the top of the material, and my XY datum is on the bottom. <clears throat> so how do you answer the people that say they want it digital? Well, then I buy a digital insert, Dennis. Uh, so um, if we go to, let's pop back into uh, clock kits and everything. Um, we do have a uh, different type of clocks that we can do, but we can come in and if I search, if if they don't have it then i will um oops not digita digital let's try it with an l um and let's bear with me a second okay so don't see anything digital there but let's go ahead and let's jump into another tab and uh, digital clock inserts because they're not the only game in town um, we can uh, look for all different types and, and a lot of the digital inserts and things uh, you know they're you're typically square you won't see really anything that's got a decorative round type face but you would just cut out your rectangular pocket for that so um, if we look at a couple of the insert companies we have clockparts.com, uh, Bearwood, um, Clockworks, Amazon, you know, all of these different things. Uh, we know that, um, you know, you've got um, Alibaba, which those are overseas, you know, so you can kind of, uh, you know, work from there. Uh, let's check out what clockparts.com uh, has. And, um, Let's see if they have, uh, you know, uh, they have digital display uh, type inserts. Um, you know, you can look at uh, a lot of different items. So let's see, uh, other than LCD, let's see if they use the word digital. I think it would be 
Um, oops, wrong one. Let me get back in there, bear with me. <clears throat> you know, these uh, digital inserts, they are, you know, you're just cutting a basic kind of a rectangular shape and all. And they have, you know, different, uh, you know, type faces and stuff, but it's the same process. You just got to find the source for it. Uh, here's the dimensions. So the depth the pocket diameter which is the 275 uh, it tells you how big the lip is and everything so that's how you would kind of go about doing it you find the you find the source for your your part you know um, all right so let's go back in now let's go ahead and click OK on this to get our job setup done now on my particular insert my particular insert I have a two and a half inch diameter uh, insert that I need to uh, put in. So I'm basically going to create that insert. Uh, let's zoom in here. And first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my alignment tool and get it centered on my material because my, uh, you know, my design is also uh, centered. So I want to get it centered, and then I want to find a. I want to find where I want this face to go. You know where I want it to fall and you know for me I want to kind of be right around I almost want to follow this lower curve down here uh, and all but uh, I think that will be uh, good there for my clock that's where my face is going to be now my overall diameter is two and three quarters so this is two and a half. If I offset outward another quarter of an inch, that's going to uh, give me my basically my where showing me where my diameter of my face is going to go. Well, I want to. I'm going to be trimming these vectors uh, to the my outer diameter of my circle, but I need those vectors to be closed, and I do not want to have to go through each one of these little vectors by vector and all and try to close them and redraw them and everything so i'm going to use the trim tool not the interactive scissor trim tool but the regular trim tool and for that i want my when it redraws my boundaries i want to have about a ten thousandths of an inch clearance away from my perimeter so instead of an instead of offsetting this 0.25 circle outward a quarter of an inch I'm gonna go 0.26 I'm gonna add that ten thousandths of an inch in and I'm gonna offset it outward and now I can use this offset as my boundary and let's let's take both of these and let's put them on another layer so we can add a different color to them so it's not black on black I wanna move these to a new layer and I'm just gonna call this my uh, clock Boundary, 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 boundary. I think it's A-R-Y. Anyway, whatever way it may be. But I want to give this a bright uh, color that really kind of stands out. And hopefully uh, that does so we can see that red on black. All right. Now, on this, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my design. My entire design. It's grouped together. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to select this outer circle here. And with the trim tool under edit objects, the fourth icon, second row, this gives me the ability to clear everything outside of that boundary or everything inside of the boundary. Now my boundary is the last item that I selected. So if I select the um, <clears throat> design first and then I come in and select that boundary last it's going to clear to that boundary that I select last that that vector I select last so I want to clear everything inside of it away so when I clear that <clears throat> that will 
remove everything and not only does it remove everything but let me go ahead and delete this because i don't need this anymore but it closes off all of those vectors and it also gives me a ten thousandths of an inch clearance from where my face is going to sit so if i were to offset this out the actual quarter of an inch um that it's going to be to kind of represent my face you'll see that my design is is standing off of it a bit so which is good and that's what i want so i added that ten thousandths of an inch into my offset here and uh, that way it gives me that extra clearance but by using that boundary to clear everything inside that boundary away it clears out my circular uh, area where my clock's going to go but it also closes off all the vectors so i don't end up with a bunch of open vectors and i don't have to go in and trim a bunch of lines and things uh, and so <clears throat> we want to get that uh, going um, you know we want it that this is the start now this vector here this is my pocket insert so therefore and let me go through and delete all of these delete this bear with me a second while it deletes those so we're going to start off in this uh with this vector here this is going to be our pocket cut and this pocket cut my depth is 9 16 my clock insert has a uh you know a depth diameter or depth of uh, 9 16 so i'm going to be a little bit beyond that you know i could go a half inch give me a little bit of clearance but i'm going to go about uh 0.625 you know about five eighths of an inch deep i'll be using my quarter inch end mill to cut this and then we're going to calculate this cut okay and that's going to create that that pocket where my clock insert is going to go now as far as the actual design itself first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, notice that when i trimmed it it ungrouped everything and that's exactly what we want but what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab my boundary because uh, you know if i v carve this right now it wouldn't look bad if i were to v carve this as it is uh, but I want a nice border, a nice V-carve outline border around this design. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this, offset this line outward a distance of a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to create sharp corners if there's any where they are. Uh, and I want to select the new I want to select that new boundary so I'm going to offset that outward and that's going to create this uh, boundary line here around let's get my board back into full view that's going to create this outline boundary line around my my clock now from here from here I want the um, my uh, my 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 v carve kind of boundary or whatever it may be uh it, i i want to add another line here and i want to offset this one a distance of 0.275 uh, just a number that i came up with from earlier that looks really good so i'm going to offset that out another 0.275 and then from here from this one because it's selecting the new one each time uh, from here, I'm going to go just another 0.2 inches, and that's going to be my profile boundary. All right, so this is going to be my clock. So if I grab my entire design, I can go ahead and turn off that inside vector by selecting on it. I'm going to turn off my outside boundary because uh, that's my final cutout, my profile cut and i'm going to everything else that remains selected i'm going to group that together and now i can go ahead and create my toolpath so i'm using a very simple v carve toolpath zero start depth no flat depth 
Uh, I'm going to be using a 60 degree V bit uh, for this and I'm going to calculate this toolpath. Okay, so when we preview this, that spacing and that depth and everything, we're going to get a lot of nice definition and depth out of the clock. Um, and so that single, that double line that we created creates this very deep profile cut, giving us some nice depth in there, really outlining the design. And um, the distance between the original design and that first quarter of an inch, that's this nice flat border coming all the way around uh, the, the design. Really nice depth inside around the leaves and, and everything in this particular insert giving a really nice definition and stuff uh, for the cut. And so now the final cut uh, for this one is the profile cut. So the profile cut is gonna be cutting uh, for all the way through my material, three quarters of an inch. I'll be using a quarter inch end mill for this and I will be on the outside of the line. Now I'm not gonna add tabs, but yes, you would add tabs in various places to hold this in piece, but I'm not gonna add the tabs simply because I wanna be able to preview this cut and remove the waste material by double clicking on it. And so therefore, you know, um, I've got a nice, just a nice very uh, wall clock that you would see in a kind of a country style home, you know, uh, you know, just, you know, a country kitchen or, you know, even something, you know, old fancy or whatever, but it's just a very nice simple clock uh, that our clock insert probably cost us you know, anywhere from, you know, three to $11, depending on how we buy them and where we buy them from. Uh, the board's very inexpensive. So I probably, all together with shipping and all, in this project, I probably got 20 bucks into it, if that. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, I can turn around and, uh, you know, sell this for, you know, 50 or $60. Whatever, you know, however you want to see it. Uh, but nice clocks. So let's take a look at some other options and other designs and things and how we would go about, uh, you know, grabbing those. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's turn off all of our vectors here and let's go back to our class layer, the blank slate. Now, <clears throat> when I'm looking for um, decorative designs, and things I'm just perusing Google and I'm I, I, I like the flourishes and, and stuff like that uh, you know the the unique shapes and things but it's not just one image it's a combination of multiple images you know uh, and putting them together uh, to come up with something you know unique and things um, and uh, I really like this uh, flourish here so this may be like a, a kind of a corner look, uh, you know, turned 45 degrees, um, you know, uh, looking at different pieces and everything. Uh, this could be turned upside down and be a bottom part. I mean, so you just, I'm looking for different things, uh, different, uh, you know, graphics that I can use and hell, I can even, you know, draw my own depending on what it is. Um, I can, uh, you know, take refuge in, um, you know, creating my own designs if, you know, uh, whatever it may be. That's not my design. I'm just talking out loud as I'm clicking on things. So, uh, for me, all I did was for the search is I just, very simple uh, search. There's so many, just decorative design vector, you know, decorative design vector, uh, decorative flourish, you know, uh, you know, a lot of different things. Um, you know, whatever it is may be. Now, I don't particularly look for designs that have a hole in the middle uh, for, um, that have a hole in the middle for a clock and all. I make my own hole and stuff. And um, so I just, um, whatever it is that you like and whatever you uh, want, you know. So 
let's take a look at let's get into our Vetrix software and let's bring in an image and let's take a look at how we would put together something from uh, um, for carving so let's go ahead and let's look at I'm looking for one that is 1300 by 1300 there we go all right so let's uh, trace this out and um, turn that fading off you're gonna see little uh, flickers of things let me see if I can um, get that to move for a minute what that is is that's another image behind it all right so let's open our trace tool here and turn the fading off so we can see our full image and I'm gonna slide my slider bar until I get the detail that I want uh, in my tracing I'm gonna use all three of these elements in one way or another so I'm gonna go ahead and um, preview that tracing apply it and close now I'm gonna turn off that image so I have my three vectors let's go ahead and ungroup them and then I will take each individual item and I will group it together individually so that way I'm not messing with any of the vectors I'll group those together now for this particular uh, design I it's going to be more of a rectangular shape clock in, in some way or another so uh, let's go ahead and uh, size this stuff up and then we'll get it moved around so I'm gonna select them all and I'm gonna scale them up not that big all right let's get it centered up on the board okay good um, but I'm bum bum I'm going to uh, make those a little bit smaller because I am going to be putting a border around this, but I'm going to be moving these around and changing these. I'm just getting them right now pre-sized where I want them. So let's bring them in just a little bit more. Okay, so now these uh, two shapes, although you know very similar, uh, they're different, and uh, you can tell by the design in the vector. Um, that there are two different designs, two different shapes and all. And I may like that, I may wanna keep things uh, consistent, uh, you know, just depending on, you know, the look and stuff. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, of the two, I'm gonna actually use this one on the right. I'm gonna take this one for the time being and I'm gonna move it off the board. And this guy up here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring him up. And I'm gonna flip him. I'm gonna go into the mirror tool and I'm going to create a mirror copy, but I'm not gonna flip it about the job center. I'm just gonna flip that copy to the right. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, take that copy there and flip it down. Actually, no, I'm not. We're gonna get rid of that. We'll leave that just like that. And this guy here let's get my board back into full view this guy here I'm going to actually just not make a mirror copy of him I'm just going to flip him vertically so he's kind of upside down and I want him to be about the bottom of my clock area right there and then I'm going to make sure he's centered on the board. There we go. And what I'll end up doing is making sure everything is aligned, centered, and all properly. Now, this one here, this guy, I'm going to, he's kind of in a 45 degree angle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate him. Uh, 45 degrees and see if I can get him flat All 
There we go. All right. And uh, someone's beeping at me, so let's see if I'm uh, getting alerted of a black screen. I cannot see my screen tonight, so let's see what we've got. Um, all right, so it's saying that my screen is frozen. Is that a fact? Is the screen frozen? Are you all uh, able to see me moving things around? Okay, it's gonna have a lot to do with my bit rate and, and y'all's bit rate and all that. I'm trying to get all that worked out uh, so that the stream is much better. But um, if I if I come in and uh, you know my quality. I'm going to try to see what I can do to uh, make things a little better. All right, let's see if we can. Uh... Okay. All right, so now with this guy, I want, I don't necessarily want to make like a, a like a defined circle or something uh uh you know uh outlining where the clock face is going to be i want my design to kind of uh do that itself but what i'm wanting to do is uh to kind of create something that has a little bit of a style working with just what i've got here without um let's flip this to the right and I want to get these two centered on my board, left to right. And I'm going to move them up ever so slightly. Now what I need to do is I'm going to group those two together I'm going to group these two together uh, as one. I want to group uh, these two items together as one because I want to click on this. I want to select, whoops, I want to click on this first. I want to select this last, my boundary, and I want to make sure that they are centered with one another. And then ultimately, when they're centered with one another, uh, I'm going to take all of them and make sure they're centered on my board and then this guy here um, I thought I might want to go with kind of like a cone shaped uh, you know rectangular cone shape but the more I'm looking at them the more I am looking at him Let's move him up a little bit. He's going to be the centerpiece, and then I need two smaller parts here to kind of fill in the blanks. So I'm going to revert back to, let's get all of these up here a little bit. And let's get, if I select this first and these guys last and get them using the align to selection, uh, make sure they're centered where they are. Now I'm going to take these guys and I'm going to mirror them. I'm going to mirror them uh, about job center now. Now I'm going to use the flip about job center and I'm going to flip them horizontally. Um, which, uh, not horizontally. If I learn my directions, I'm going to flip them vertically, vertically. Uh, so let's undo that. All right, one more time. Let's flip him vertically. There we go. And um, let's move everything up. I'm trying to make room here. 
move everything up right about there and these two guys down here let's get them down these two guys here let's come up a bit not much I'm just trying to position everything now I want to mirror him I want to see if I can get this feather right here this little tail I want to see if I can if it's going to be in the same spot if I just flip him horizontally if so then I may look at um, cutting the tail off or something let's look and let's flip I'm not making a mirror copy. Uh, let's flip him horizontally. Oop, not vertically, goofball. Um, that's good. Okay. We'll leave that. I'd love it if that flourish had a little bit more depth down to the center. I'd like it to fit in there. So what can i do to pull all of this down to the center a bit or you know maybe stretch so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually distort the image a little i'm actually going to move this over where i want it here that's where i want that v um and then on my uh design if i can find my middle box there I'm going to bring this edge out because it doesn't have to be uniform. I'm not looking for, I'm just looking for something that looks good. I'm going to bring that one out. It's still going to throw me off on that edge, so I'm a gun. Um, let's see here. Let's bring that over. All right, no matter what, it's still going to pull that end off the edge. So let's see if I can. Um, All right, that'll work. Okay, so now I'm still going to be using my two and a half inch insert. Uh, let's go ahead and get that on the board. Um, I still need to, and I'll figure out where I want to place that in a moment, but I'm still going to offset. Now this time I'm just going to offset a quarter of an inch because of the simple fact that um, I don't have any vectors to clear out. My, my face is, uh, you know, clocks here. So I may look at, you know, do I want to use a bigger clock? So what is... What does clock kits have um, for larger diameter faces? So let's see here. Let's go with, let's get rid, let's get, um, let's get rid of the word digital. Let's go by all of my clock inserts here. And let's go with a overall diameter of five inches five and seven eighths it's a nice looking clock face it's kind of got those floral patterns in there a bit so five and seven eighths um, 15 16 is the depth of cut uh, this would because of the size of it it would be uh, like an inch and a half uh, clock uh, almost a one inch depth so it, it would either be sticking out the back or not a pocket so I don't want to go that big um, let's take a look here if I'm at two and a quarter let's go with uh, let's see what we have at three and an eighth I'm, I'm a decent fan of the Roman numerals, kind of like the numbers 
old school. But um, seven eighths, so that would be good. And then it has an overall diameter of three inches, or three and an eighth, and then three inches. So let's let's work with that. So let's get rid of these two, um, and we're gonna go with a three inch. Pop that in there, and then a 3.125. Uh, oh no, wrong one. I want to offset it. I want it to be centered. So offset 3.125 or 0.125, and click offset. All right, now these two guys here, I can go ahead and kind of get position where I want. Now I want it centered uh, on the board, you know. Uh, that looks good to me. Now I'm going to be creating boundary lines around all of this for, I want a nice outline. I want a nice outline uh, around this, a nice V groove outline going all the way around it and everything. And then I want my profile cut. I don't want just a square clock. I want this to have a little bit of this curve, a little bit of this curve and shape to it and all. Um, so I'm going to select everything except for my clock inserts I need them guys to be uh, how they are uh, in the position they are and I'm gonna bring this down a little bit in size I want to kind of bring it in a little bit in size okay my clock inserts I'll go ahead and bring that down a bit all right so now if I select all of these, um, I can basically, um, I want to ungroup. Do I want to ungroup? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I want to ungroup them. So I want to ungroup everything. This one too. And these guys, I'm going to ungroup once and twice to break them up. Once to break up the dual group and then the second time to break up everything. And all I care about, all I want is the outside perimeter of all of these. The outside perimeter. Oops. The outside perimeter. I'm holding my shift key down and selecting all the outside perimeters. Now I'm going to offset these perimeters uh, and I want to go outward. My first offset is going to be about a quarter of an inch. It's kind of like a magic number for me. I really like the quarter of an inch offset uh, for that nice flat area around the design. And um, you know, so it's going to create all of these additional vectors in here and things. And then from here, I'm going to uh, go through and just select this new perimeter that's been created and I'm gonna offset that another distance and probably I'll stick with a quarter of an inch so we'll offset that a quarter of an inch and then finally uh, from that outside vector that's selected just select it again I'm gonna go point two. I want to be off of my V card by a distance of from eighth of an inch to point two for me all right so now I've got kind of all of my vectors here and everything now some of the vectors that were drawn I don't want you know I don't want carved and stuff uh, but what I always tend to do is I always tend to grab all of my vectors except for the clock insert and the outermost boundary the far outside boundary and I just come in and do a kind of a V carving, you know, just create a, a, a V carve tool, but just to see what the heck I've created and what it's going to look like. But before I do that, let's size this down or size my board up. One of the two, uh, I will go ahead and um, make my board a little bit bigger, a little wider along the X uh, for this because I don't want to size anything. I want to keep it just the way it is. So let's get my board a little bit better size. We're gonna go 11, uh, let's go 12 inches on the, on the width. And 
if I glue up a couple of my panels um, let's go 16 and a quarter on the height and let's get that oh daggummit I do that every time always click OK 12 by 16 and a quarter and always click OK to lock it in all right now one of the things one of the mistakes I made I can see it right now is I had sharp corners selected I don't want that I want a nice nice flowing line so let's go ahead and get this uh, centered up uh, the way it is let's get it centered on the board but I want to go back and I'm going to redo uh, these vectors. And so let's go ahead and uh, undo these. And I want to go back into that offset and I'm going to start again. So on that offset, that first offset of a quarter of an inch, I don't want sharp corners. I want a nice flowing line. Uh, and I had sharp corners selected, so I don't want that. I want a nice flowing line. And then from there, one more time, let's grab this vector. We're going to go another quarter of an inch. Um, and then from there, on this outside vector, a 0.2. And once again, let's get myself centered back up on the board. All right. So like I said, what I like to do first off is just kind of see where I'm at, what I've got and all, because I'm just creating this. There's no particular rhyme or reason, the things that I do, just what looks good. And I'm going to turn off my very far outside border, my profile cut, and I'm going to turn off my clock inserts. And I'm just going to come in and create a V-carved toolpath. So I'm not going to use a flat depth because I want to see if there's anything that's going to cut through, what my warnings are and all that stuff. And I'm going to calculate it. Let it go through and um, let it see if it throws any warnings, um, you know, or any problems. And when it takes a long time to calculate running back and forth like that, that typically means there's an issue. So I am going to, uh, there's my issue. I got to cut, it's going to cut through. Uh, so let's start again and Let's find out what's going to cut through. So we want to get rid of this. That needs to go. Um, and I want to get rid of some of this little junk that my offsets created. I want to get rid of all of this junk, actually. This, this, delete all that. and get rid of this one and this one down here all right so by doing that that should remove all of my issues of cutting through warnings so let's go ahead and uh, let's turn this off in my outside border and let's calculate that one more time it should it should calculate uh, fairly easily. It's looking at all the little vectors and things now. So all right. So it's still wanting to cut through. I'm going to click OK. So it'll actually create the tool path so I can see where it's wanting to cut through. Uh, and uh, that way I can find out my problem. So right here in this heavy blue area here and this heavy blue area here is where it's going to want to cut through. So if I preview this cut, these two large areas are where it's going to cut through. Okay. All right. Now, I want more depth and definition uh, in these uh, floral designs. I want a lot of depth in around these uh, these florals and stuff. So I'm actually going to kind of reverse them. And let's go ahead and first of all, before we do that, let's come in and um, uh, let's... 
<clears throat> going to delete this inner boundary here and On these outside boundaries, I'm going to do a very small offset around them. So a uh, to create a second line because a V carve toolpath cuts between the lines. So I'm going to create a second line. I wanted to kind of do a reversal of the cut. So I'm going to offset this out a small amount. Um, and I want everything that was carved to be up and everything that was up to be carved. And I'm going to go a sixteenth of an inch okay <coughs> to create that new boundary <coughs> excuse me and I'm going to now V carve this Again, just seeing what I've got, what I'm coming up with. Uh, I'm just going to calculate this. Let's reset that preview and preview the selected tool pass. Okay, so uh, for me, that's much better. I wanted all the center areas carved in. I want that detail, that hand cut look. So now I need to create my final offset uh, for this, uh, which is going to be, and let's go ahead and uh, grab this. That should surround those two. This one should surround those two. This final outset here and this one here. With all of those selected, I should be able to offset outward and I am gonna go, um, ta -dum -pum -pum. I do wanna go that quarter of an inch. Let's small it up some. Let's go point two and offset that outward. There we go. All right, now. I'm still getting these caverns in here, right? These cuts and stuff. Uh, and that's nice and all, but that's not, you know, that's not what I want. It kind of fills in those areas and everything. So I don't have just a flat, you know, just, you know, nothing there. I do want something cut in there, but I don't want it cutting through the board. But I would like to have a little bit of a nice depth and angle to it and stuff. Uh, and I want to separate it from the border. So I do have to do a little bit of node editing. So node editing is a way to, uh, you know, adjust the nodes of a vector, uh, cut, trim, you know, change the line style. So with the node editing, I want to come here uh, in the general area of where these insets are coming in. And I want to come right out about here and in node editing, I want to cut the node on this line. You'll see that green node pop up there. And then right somewhere close around by it, we'll cut it there. And that's going to separate uh, this node from here. Now I want to back off just a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. I want to cut the vector here and come somewhere right about you know close to it and cut the vector there. And what I've essentially just done is I basically cut these segments of lines uh, from these two parts. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to join it by bringing the two endpoints to a common point of intersection. Same thing here. I'm going to join by bringing the two endpoints to a common point of intersection. And up here on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my nodes and I'm gonna I'm kind of looking at this point and gauging how far away I want to be 
uh, from that point uh, where it's what helps me determine what node I'm going to choose and now we're going to cut away that side that way it leaves these two lines here these segments that I can delete and then I can select on this vector and I can join by bringing those two endpoints to a common point of intersection and these two bringing them together all right so now I have these two large shapes here knowing that they're gonna cut through uh, because of the size the sheer size between the lines but I can um, prevent that by offsetting them a little bit and so offset 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 we're always using a lot of offset so I'm gonna inward offset this time and I'm gonna offset them by about you know point two quarter of an inch or whatever you know it may be uh, I just grab basically whatever's in that last point now I want to delete this and this I may want to keep these vectors here for some nice two nice deep cuts there to kind of match these two down here but this guy right up here I don't know about I don't I don't think I want him in there um, because it's gonna to want to carve all of this material away and I don't want to offset them because that's gonna bring it closer to my diameter and all so I believe that I am just going to delete him. All right, a five and a half inch clock diameter would look good in there. All right, so now with that, once again, I'm going to go through and I'm going to calculate this. Oops, no I'm not. Let's stop that. Stop the presses. I got to turn off my clock face can't be having those selected and I can't have my outside perimeter selected so let's calculate that one more time and this is going to be my final design here um, I believe it's going to look good so the actual ornate little flourishes I created an offset from them so it would reverse the cut all the flowered lines and areas and all would be cut deep um, and uh, the outlines be shallow type deal so let's reset this preview and preview the selected toolpath now this outside line I want that's that nice defining perimeter cut and then between that perimeter cut I want a nice flat area around my designs and all now what I'd like to see what I'd like to see happen is I'd like these inside cuts here not to be like this I'd like to see them cut uh, basically uh, like they are here uh, up in the middle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that offset so they do cut down but I will limit the depth of cut and I'm going to limit it to uh, point uh, 375 three eighths so let's go ahead and delete that let's do that now let's go in here these inside vectors I don't like the way that those look so I'm gonna get rid of them and we're going to recalculate this toolpath but this time I'm gonna use a flat depth but uh, 37.375 depth on that and that should it's gonna limit these it's gonna create a flat bottom in this big guy over here but It is what it is. I try to stay away from flat depths. I like that nice look. So let's uh, reset this preview and preview it again. All right. And so that gives me kind of my uh, similar cuts I don't like the flat depth I'm not a big fan of it but um, that'll be fine all right now the final thing to do here is uh, to cut my pocket cut so 
So my pocket uh, for the clock is going to be um, 0.875. Uh, I got a three quarter inch board. I'm gonna have to use a little bit thicker board for that particular insert that I'm looking at because I believe that insert was 0.875 in depth. Um, yep, seven eighths. So I would have to use a one inch board for this, which is not a problem. I'm not worried about that. Whatever it takes. So uh, we're gonna go. We'll go uh, 15 16 and uh, calculate that. Oh, gotta change my job setup. Job setup. Gotta change it to a one inch board, one inch thick. Click OK. Uh, it's gonna ask me if I wanna calculate all the toolpaths. No, I don't. Uh, just the two that I've, or the one that I've created. Uh, I am gonna recalculate that one for this uh, board. And then my pocket cut and my profile cut are going to be new because I do have two different designs in this. But the whole long story short is, is you don't have to have 3D models. You don't have to have, and we can make some beautiful 3D clocks and things, but we can give our clocks carving and depth and definition, you know. Uh, get, we can give it texture to make it look like it's a hand cut design. We can do all kinds of things um, to um, come up with something unique and different. Uh, let's grab, make sure my clock face is still selected. It's not. So we're going to go 0.9375 and calculate with my quarter inch end mill, leaving a little bit of skin on that uh, back end. Let's go ahead and preview uh, all the tool, not all the tool pass, the visible tool pass, the two that I can see. Yes, the boundary and the face cut were still highlighted. Thank you, Howard. Very good call. All right, let's go ahead and do my final profile cut. And, um, you know, you can make a square clock. You can create, you know, I could create a pocket cut uh, between these two lines where I have just my square board and uh, I have this nice defining line here. Uh, whatever it is you want. I. I like the uh, profile cuts that kind of take on the shape a little bit. Uh, you know, that doesn't have to be so dramatic. I mean, I can, you know, reduce some of these curves and all, but I'm going to leave it as it is because I get tired of just square, round, oval, you know. I want, I want a little bit of uh, just different. So let's go one inch deep with this with a quarter inch end mill. I'm not going to add tabs to this, but of course we would. I just want to be able to cut this out so I can get rid of the waste material to show you. And now let's add some color so you can kind of see what this would uh, look like. You might think I have funky taste, who knows. But let's go ahead and give this pocket a color. Oops. A uh, color of uh, like a gray, so you can kind of define that. But the V carve, let's give this a little bit of a color. Um, I'm gonna go with purple. No, I'm just kidding. Ah, uh, let's see here. Oh, these colors. We'll go with the maroon and let's uh, change up the board a little bit and so the final thing that I would do is I would round over the, the outside edge okay uh, and and round over that outside edge so that is my final cut and let's go ahead and do that on my profile 
my profile here. I'm going to do a my final outside perimeter. I'm going to do a cut uh, to the depth of a quarter of an inch. I'm going to use my eighth inch roundover bit, which I hope is in here still. There it is. And I'm going to step over an eighth of an inch so it, it rounds over the edge and calculate that. And let's preview that round over. There we go. And so, you know, we have a nice looking clock face that's just something different. It's kind of a two dimensional cut. Um, I may, I think personally, in my opinion, I may rework this flower, actually go in and redraw this lower part of the flower and center it up so that the left and the right side here, I'm very anal about things like that, so that they match uh, somewhat similar to up here. That tail sweeping off to the right here on this uh, feather is kind of throwing off the balance down below here. Everything is nice and somewhat balanced up here but down below it becomes kind of chaos uh, and uh, I just don't like that big void here if it was uniform like this smaller one uh, or if I can center it up and make these even smaller here of some sort uh, then um, I, I would like this much better but it gives you kind of a general idea you might think that's just but as ugly I don't know but I just uh, it's not a matter of what it looks like um, yes it does look like it has two eyes in it every time I look like it, it looks like an upside down skull or something I don't know why every time I've been looking at it lately so but um, um, I just it's not the point of what we're making here it's a point of you know what the you know what things look like um, and, and and how we go about uh, approaching them so I'm gonna move all of these over to a new layer and this is going to be called uh, clock two I want to rework that one a little bit uh, I think it would be nice if it was centered and a little bit even up I might try to find another different centerpiece here who knows I might eliminate that centerpiece and let me see if I can show you this I might eliminate this centerpiece and literally mirror this and have a clock and a barometer down below um, and all what I mean by that is uh, let's move I think did I already move these over let's find out here uh, let's um, yep clock two good all right let me get clock two active so I'm working in it so I don't make any changes but uh, let's go ahead and let's get rid of all of these uh, boundary lines for a moment I'm going to get rid of all of this and I'm going to take all of this and mirror it, mirror it about job center, flipping it, to, not horizontally, damn it, I did it again, um, vertically. Okay, I'm going to uh, take and lower this. Because I wasn't quite centered above my center line there so I'm gonna lower this give me just a little bit of space in between and take all of these guys center them up whoops center them up with the alignment tool and once again uh, quickly we're gonna grab uh, all of the outside vectors this vector this guy here this vector and this vector we're going to offset it i'm going to offset it outward a quarter of an inch outward i went inward i got it outward nice all right i'm going to grab this guy here and i'm going to offset him outward uh another point two no no I want to go another quarter of an inch. 
offset that and then this one I want to go point to that point two, uh, by the way, just gives me a little bit of room for rounding over and stuff like that, and, and everything. Uh, there's no, it's not. There's no particular reason why I have. I'm doing a point two. It doesn't mean you have to do a point. You know what I mean? It's just uh, all right. So now, with all of this, I need to turn off this clock face because I need these diameters to stay exactly the same. But I do need to kind of size this in just a little bit. I want to try to, I'm holding down my shift key and I want to try to size it in. I'm not worried about these vectors that are about to make contact with my clock faces. That's fine because they're getting eliminated. Oh, too much. Let it catch up to itself. All right. Um, bum bum. Do this the smart way. So I have sixteen point three, which is fine uh, on my. No, it's not fine. My height was sixteen and uh. Eighth, yeah, I just want it on the board. That's all I care about. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and um, delete, delete. Uh, do I want those guys there? Do I want them there? Do I want them there? I don't know. So, uh, one more time. Let's go ahead and recalculate some things. So, my pocket cut, uh, I'm going to open it up and recalculate it with this one in here. This is going to have a second clock, a barometer, uh, a thermostat, uh, uh, whatever. And the thermostats are pretty cool over at Clock Kits. Uh, let's reset our preview and let's preview that. Uh, Give it a little bit more balance. All right, let's go ahead and select um, all of this and that. Turn off this clock face and this clock face. I'm not sure about those two pieces. Do I want them there or do I not? Let's go ahead and calculate it and let's see what, uh, what we come up with. Um, I'm turning off what I don't want to calculate. Calculate that I am limiting it to a 3 8 inch depth of cut because of those two guys in the middle. Um, I may just have them flat. I don't think I want those two parts in the middle. So let's uh, let's stop this for a minute. Let me let me turn those off because I don't want them in there. All right, calculate. This will give the clock a little bit more balanced look, uh, not so off balanced and things. Um, let's go ahead and preview that uh, selected toolpath. That I I like that deep defining outside border. Okay, and um, oh. I found out what can go there. All right, so let's uh, do the profile cut. Let's get that profile cut and then the round over. We'll get the profile cut done first, then the round over, and um, found out what can go in those spots. And then we're done. Uh, let's see here. So let's preview that cut.
Let's get rid of the uh, waste material. And of course, guys and girls, in your profile cuts, you would be using uh, nodes. But let's go ahead and calculate my um, round over, quarter inch deep, uh, eighth inch step over. Round over those edges, give them that nice round over the edge. There you go. But let's see here. Let's get rid of these two. Let's get rid of them. And let's see here if I can um, who the heck is John? I don't know who John is. Mono, mono type. Really. See if I can get that. Ooh, that's a big one. Hold on a second. Uh, one inch. All right. Let me get him centered up in there, and then we'll put Kathy in there, too. Who's John and Kathy? I don't know. But... Just a nice little customization. It can be blank or it can be whatever. But let's put that in there. And let's make that one. All right, let's V-carve those two guys. These have a, this is a marketing script. It has a drop shadow to it. I figured since everything else is kind of carved in, want to uh, maybe have that as well. No flat depth on them. It's a very small area. And um, that drop shadow, uh, I like a lot. Uh, let me add a little bit of color to it so you can see. Um, But uh, let's get this. What's my simulation quality at? It's a very high, okay. Uh, I need a little bit more depth on the defining line. Bear with me a second. Let's go back in there and give that another 10 thousandths of an inch. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, anyway, so nice little customization what have you you know a little family clock whatever husband and wife but uh, you get the idea you get the idea you get the idea uh, and then and this as far as the like I said like a clock or a barometer um, they have cool uh, their uh, clock inserts uh, their thermostat is pretty cool let's see here that thermostat and of course, it all comes down to size and what's available and blah, blah, blah. But um, there's a compass, but where's the thermostat, man? Thermostat, thermometer. Yeah, so they have some cool thermometers, you know, uh, you know, different sizes. We would just change the pockets and stuff. But uh, you've got that. You've got, you know, the... Uh, I like the nautical looking one. That's pretty cool if I was making a nautical design type of thing. But all kinds of stuff. So anyway, uh, take this dumb little lesson. It's not, you know, there's not a whole lot to it. But just start grabbing anything you can. Start creating your geometric shapes or whatever the case may be. And um, carve it together. Give yourself some depth uh, in your carvings. Um and if you have to, you know, create a boundary around it so all of the inner parts cut out and everything. It gives it that, that depth, you know, carved look. Um, and, uh, you know, create some really neat looking uh, pieces and stuff. And, um, you know, that's what I say. 
That's what I think, man. Um, and have some fun with it. The circles do not look centered. They're centered, Wayne. Let's see here. Uh, they're centered side to side. They might not be centered up and down, but they're positioned where I want them. Now we could be, we could be, let's see here. Um, bum, 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 bum. Maybe if I bump. Which one, which one, which one? That one there. Ah, oh, that looks good. All right, so if we delete this one and we mirror this one, mirror. Oh, I can't mirror it. Uh, yeah, I can. No, I can't. Yeah, I can't. No, I can't. Because uh, I'm not quite. Yeah, I can. I was going to mirror it, but I, I don't think I'm going to fall in the same place. So let's, uh, oh, doggum it. I did it again. Vertical. I'll get my vertical and horizontal. All right, let me look. Okay, that actually looks good. All right, good call, Wayne. So let's get that pocket um, Calculate it out again. And by the way, I'm only using the inside circle for the pocket. That's the inside diameter uh, for the cut and all. So let's reset that. Let's preview uh, these tool paths and preview all the visible. Get that uh, cut, get that round over on those edges. And then final shape. All right. And of course, you know, I've just got color on there just for, you know, so you guys and girls can see it a little better. Um, Let's see if we can give it a little bit of uh woo. Uh let's go with kind of a mute green. Ooh. Mutant green. But the whole point of this is is those um those V carve style uh clock, those detailed designs and everything, you can really get uh some very cool things going on. Uh, and that depth and definition of those lines and stuff. This is a beautiful clock uh, on Pinterest and all, um, but uh, darelfin.com. But um, you know, you can really go crazy. All of this stuff here, all of these, all of these shapes. This is all V card uh, shapes. These triangles here. Um, nice space between the borders, those flourishes in the four corners. That's a very nice modern looking clock, you know. So, I mean, you can really just have a ball with it. And uh, there's so there's so many possibilities that you'll you'll never you'll you'll you'll, you'll have clock galore. And if you buy 10 or more clock inserts from clocks, uh, you know, you get discount uh, with clock kits and stuff. And like I said, they're not the only game in town, but you know, their pricing. Uh, when you look at something, um, their pricing basically buy 10 for this amount, you save a certain amount. Buy 50, you save this amount. You know, I'm not going to buy 50 clock inserts. I don't think I'd, I'd use them all right away. But, um, you know, I'd definitely be making, you know, I'd have 10 or something. But if I buy them individually, they're seven bucks, you know. So I'm not saving that much, you know, $7 and, uh, you know, one off. If I'm buying one off, it's, it's eight bucks. If I buy, you know, 10 or so, then I'm going to get them for, you know, seven fifty a pop, you know, plus tax and stuff, whatever the case may be. But, you know, and I have no affiliation with clock kits. They're just someone that I use and I've never had any negative experience working with them. So, you know, you know, you know, that's what I mean. 
And then of course, you know, you can move into now uh speaking of kind of a V car of cut, this is this clock, this is such a cool clock. This sunflower clock here, that's all V carved. It's a big pocket cut all the way around there. It's a big pocket cut, and then just you know, V carve around the flowers and all. I mean, come on, that's it's that's cool. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Um there's just uh, you know the the possibilities are so so endless, um, and I just wanted to basically kind of how would you approach it, uh, what do you need to do, and um, I'm hoping that what I did in here uh, kind of helps with uh, answering those questions. You know where do you find your where do you find your designs? Where do you do this? Google it. You know, flourish vectors, decorative vectors. You know whatever uh, it may be and um, uh, you know you know but I uh, I like dark stains you know uh, dark woods and dark stains if this was a walnut right um, and um, like a walnut clock and then uh, the carving was, you know, if I did, if I was going to paint it or something, it'd be something that had kind of that maple-ish look to it. Um, nah, I'd probably just leave it walnut uh, all the way through. You know, I may, you know, I, I may highlight the, uh, the, car, the, the carved areas with a... Um, uh, Oh God, what's it called? Hold on a second, bear with me. A glaze, a glaze, uh, an antique uh, wax. You know, there's all kinds of things that you can do to really just kind of uh, bring it out. But anyway, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Leanne, we started at seven o'clock, my dear. So I'm not sure if you were later. Uh, um then you thought what all did you miss now's the time to ask questions everyone this is the Q&A time because we are done that's actually a pretty clock as walnut you just think of imagine like a uh, a nice uh, dark walnut or light walnut with a nice glazing stain just to highlight those cuts a little bit yeah man or a cherry, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. All right, so go ahead and ask your questions. If you have any questions, let me know. Now is the time. Um, and uh, let's see if I can give this a uh, glazed look. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, nice. Jerry, Jerry, I'm glad you're here, Jerry. Jerry, you, you know exactly kind of where I'm coming from. Um, that beautiful gift that you uh, uh, sent my way with the spoons, um, the spoon holder, how you created that, that spoon holder uh, same similar kind of concept uh, it's a beautiful piece it's one of my favorite pieces hanging up uh, in the kitchen and um, I mean it just I love that back panel but it's the same exact kind of concept that's that's the same approach uh, I don't know if you shared uh, that picture Jerry uh, in the face digital wood carver Facebook group of that spoon holder but it was an absolute beautiful piece uh, if you didn't, uh, let me know if you would mind if I shared it and all. But it's the same kind of principle, that same carving. I love that chip carving look that you did and all. And that's what I'm talking about with these faces. Using, you know, these deep cuts and vectors and all. You can really get some uh, awesome looking stuff going on there and all. Uh, 16th inch, uh, how it grows. Um, the 16th inch flute bit uh now is that the flat the 16th inch uh flat bit um uh i'd love to yeah thanks jerry i'd love to share a picture of that it's um it's a beautiful piece it's one of my favorite 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 pieces 
hanging up in the kitchen. Um, and uh, it's just absolutely stunning. I look at it and I go, Dad, gummit, that's nice. Okay. Um, but um, the 16th inch, how it grows, the 16th inch flip bit. Are you talking about the tapered ball nose 16th inch bit? Or are you talking about the actual 16th inch end mill, the flat 16th inch small end mill? Because the 16th inch end mill would be used for small pocket cuts, you know, getting into uh, small areas and things and all. Uh, the ball nose bit, the 16th inch ball nose, is typically left for 3D model cutting um, and uh, creating, um, uh, creating, uh, getting into those detail areas with that smaller tipped bit. So. Um, it, uh, as far as the, you know, whichever one. So the ball nose bit is just, it, all that does is that gives you a little bit more detail in that 3D cut. Um, if we, you know, even with this design, um, you know, a similar type of a clock design, let me uh, move, let me turn off layer two here and turn the classroom layer back on. Um, and that's another thing, guys and girls, you have your clip art. And inside your clip art, uh, your uh, Vetch clip art, under the decorative decorative folder, if you come down, you have all of these very cool decorative uh, flourishes and things uh, that you can make some really cool stuff out of. Um, and so, John, for for that, let's say that I was doing a um let's pull this up <clears throat> and let's rotate this full on All right, let me mirror that real quick. Uh, ba -da -ba -bum. All right, so let's look at the uh, 3D view. And this was a bad example, but it'll work. Uh, let me find something with a little bit more detail for you, John, to answer that question. Give me one second here. Let me grab a... Um, Oh, come on now. Oh, let me close this. Okay. So if I were carving this, uh, John, um, I could use my eighth inch ball nose bit, but around the edges of these feathers and things, I'm not going to, my, my eighth inch ball nose, tapered ball nose is going to, the radius is going to be too big. Uh, and I'm not going to get that detail, that nice, you know, defining line and everything. So I would use my, I would step down to my 16th inch tapered ball nose. Uh, and I would carve this to get that detail. I have more detail in here. Now, these upper designs here, there's not a whole lot of detail in them. So I could get, I could use my 8th inch ball nose bit and, um, you know, they're going to look fine. But around these leaves and everything, I don't want that bit when it's stepping down. Uh, to cut these, I don't want that radius uh, kind of bludgeoning these up. You know, I want a nice detail cut and things. And so that is uh, uh, that would that would be uh, why you would use a 16th inch uh, ball nose bit um, for your 3D finish cuts. You know, more detail in your 3D finish cuts. Um, your 16th inch end mill is just getting more getting into small areas you know with your v your 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 straight cuts your pockets and v carves with flat depths and things like that um i had to leave last night's class uh, i asked about uh the answer to the job dimension in the bottom of the drawing page is gone 
did I do something to make it go away? Okay. Um, so uh, down here, I'm in 9015, uh, Peter. Uh, and down on the bottom, only in your drawing tab, uh, you would normally only see that uh, dimensions down in the bottom left hand side, the job dimensions and stuff. If you do not see it there, if it's gone, uh, make sure that nothing got changed in the options, in the options. Um, let's see here. Let me make sure there is an option for it even, because if there's not, then uh, then it would be animate camera view. Or... Yeah, there's not even an option for it. So in your drawing tab, you should see that dimension. I don't think it shows up. It does not show up in any other any other window except for the drawing window on the bottom left. And um, I don't even think in the job setup, I don't think it, it uh, has like a checkbox to show this or show that. No. Let's look under the job setup over here. Oops. No. And let's see under the view. So view draw origin. View draw modeling plane. Material block. Use shaded colors. Let's see here. Tool path drawing. So draw 2D previews. Draw rapid moves, draw plunge moves, retract, join moves, uh, wrapping off. Show toolpath tab, um, tool database. Yeah, I don't even see a setting for that option there, buddy, bro. Uh, so uh, I don't know why it would not be showing for you. It'd be in the drawing tab. I do not know. Uh, one of the things that you can do is um, I don't know what I don't know what you can do. Hold on a second. Let me see here. Um, align, join this job size and position. That's this screen. View, uh, view guidelines. Let's see here. Guidelines, Dunlock guidelines. Refresh 2D view. Maybe refresh your 2D view. Now, you don't see it when a tool is open. Make sure the tool is closed. You know, you don't see it when a tool is open. Uh, you know, when any tool is open, that goes away at the bottom. You don't see the job dimensions, so make sure your tool is closed. So take a look at it, Peter, with your tools closed and make sure it's you sure it's not there. Because um, with a tool open, it's not going to be there. Because I do not see any settings at all. Um... Yeah, I don't I don't see any settings at all that would interfere with um Yep. Yes, yeah, sir. I have no uh No earthly idea.
I'm not sure. So take a look at that. Um, well, let's uh, let's get together sometime and take a look at that. You might have to reinstall or rerun your install. Uh, um, could be a glitch. So you might want to rerun your install or your update. Um, your update patch. And you should be able to find your patch in your downloads folder that you downloaded um, that 9015. So you might be able to rerun that again. All right, so any other questions? Leanne. What happens this weekend, Leanne? Where, where, where are you going to see me? At the show? In Maryland? Was there a clock number one? William, I think, uh, I don't know if you saw it or not, but clock number one was this guy. And it looked a little something like this. And of course, I got to make that profile cut just a little bit deeper because I'm previewing it in a one inch board right now. So let's uh, make that cut all the way out. And then the only thing it's missing, the only thing it's missing is it's, um, oops, is it's rounded over edge. So profile cut, quarter of an inch deep, eighth of an inch step over, negative 0.125, not 125.125. Uh, using the white side 2050 eighth inch round over bit uh, that you hear me talk about often and calculate. Preview that calculation and round over that outside edge. Give it a nice little round over edge. And then of course, if we turn off that global fill, you'll be able to see that edge a little bit clearer. So this was clock number one, William. This was clock number one. Oh, cool, Ian. That's cool. Um, you're going to see Terry. Uh, if it's the Maryland show, you're going to see Terry. Uh, you won't see me. I won't be there. I'm going to be, uh, I think Terry is going to Maryland. Burl is going to another show. And then I'm going to be uh, doing uh, a tiny house show in North Carolina at some point. Excellent. Yes. Um, we will have bits at the show, but they will not have the 16th inch end mill or the 32nd inch tapered ball nose. 
those two bits will not be at the show. They're not part of the um, our uh, bit sets that we sell at the shows. So you would have to call for those, uh, Leanne. You would have to call in for those. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, hopefully, I don't know. Just like I said, uh, hopefully you can take something away with this. I mean, heck, even if it was a, you know, a, um, you know, a freaky looking uh, clock uh, for whatever, you know. Let's see if I have. Do I have? Uh, I'll give you just a real last quick example. Uh, if I go into my pictures, and this one's fast, we won't have to, uh, pictures, uh, camera roll, black and white clip art, let's go all the way down, uh -huh. All right, we'll use this. This is not what there was a skull one, not, not that skull, but an actual skull. I was going to put the clock in his mouth. <laughs> but um, let's look at this lion here. He's a very, very small image, uh, very poor detail. So I don't know how well it's going to be. Um, but just, you know, thinking outside of the box a little bit, let's go ahead and uh, trace him very quickly. Uh, let's pull this I was pulling the wrong one let's pull this in and preview apply close uh, turn off the image ungroup him delete this and Group it back together. Size this up. Let's get it, you know, whatever size, you know, this clock would be. Let's go about this big because I do need to pronounce it in there. Uh, let's say we have our two and a half inch. We'll use our two and a half inch clock for this, 2.5. Uh, we will drop it right about there. We will offset, offset that out in a quarter of an inch for that two and three quarters but I'm gonna go 0.26 and offset that outward and with this guy and this offset selected I can clear with my trim tool inside of that boundary getting rid of that and then I can turn around and get rid of that clock insert and let's go ahead and create a pocket cut for the um, for the clock and for the lion or the tiger lions tigers and bears oh my uh, we're going to offset this outer perimeter this outer perimeter because they're all different so we're going to grab all of these separate ones i don't care all about all this inside stuff just everything that makes up the outside uh, we're going to offset that outward uh, let's go a quarter of an inch and then this perimeter here and by the way let's undo that again uh, offset outward a quarter of an inch selecting the new turn this outside boundary off hit delete to get rid of all that crap that just got created except for that outside boundary and then we're going to offset that another quarter of an inch that'll be my profile cut um if i cut all this all this and one more one more one more one more offset let's go 0.2 Okay, let's select all of this. Let's turn off this outside boundary, turn off this inside clock right here, and let's do a V-carve toolpath. I'm not gonna set a flat depth on this. I'm just gonna let it go. Um, all right, it's wanting to cut through. Let me find out where it's cutting through. I can tell where it's cutting through because I'm an idiot. I have my clock still selected, so let me turn that off. 
calculate. There we go. Uh, let's preview that selected toolpath. Get that nice defining perimeter cut. That nice defining look there. Let's turn off the color so you can actually see it's, you know, the detail. Imagine that clock face right in here. Let's go ahead and do our final profile cut. Profile cut. Cutting all the way through the material. This was still set up for a one inch board, so we'll do that. Uh, we're going to use our quarter inch end mill. And it's kind of the same step for what we just did, right? Same thing you hear me doing. Uh, we're going to calculate that. Let's preview that cut. Get rid of our waste. And uh, so we don't have such a hard edge. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that profile cut. Oops. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do that profile cut with a quarter inch depth of cut, eighth inch step over, negative 0.125. And let's grab our round over bit. Which is eluding me right this second. Uh, where the hell did it go? There it is. Round over bit. Calculate. Preview. All right. Let's give this a little bit of color. Uh, this is a um, uh, tiger, so let's go with kind of a black, you know. Um, you know, cut. And uh, for you tiger fans and stuff, nice wall clock. Very simple. You know what I mean? Uh, and it's got nice depth and definition if we turn it up on its side and turn the the um, You know, you can see the depth the cut, you know, the nice depth and definition and everything in there um, Just really just uh, you know add it and things um, When you add that color in and let's add a light color uh, Let's go with kind of a grayish light gray so you can kind of see those shadows and stuff but um you know anything anything you know what i mean it doesn't have to be florals and flowers and what have you uh it could be anything and um this was a very very poor low resolution picture of a tiger um that you know with a nice you know whatever color you paint them you know black or what have you but uh with a nice gold face or something uh, you know um, to go with the black stripes maybe something with a nice I don't know white black face or whatever you know what I mean uh, let's see here if it's a Bengal tiger we can give it a little bit of an orange <laughs> uh, now um, I would probably not color uh, the outside's hard. I can't show this. Uh, I can't. Let me see if I can figure out a way to show this. Bear with me a second. If I V carve just these two guys, I can do this. Hold on. If I V carve this, uh, no flat depth. I'm going to give it just about a 0 0.005 start depth. That way it makes it carve just a little bit deeper than the other one. So that way, uh, I can literally add a color to it. So if I add a color to this, let's say I make it black, right? See how it outlines that black. And then my other V carve, which is the lion, I can give that a color of, you know, a light orange or a dark orange or whatever, you know, whatever color he is. Uh, my clock pocket, um, let's go with kind of a gray. How about this clock pocket instead? <laughs> kind of a dark gray. So you can kind of, uh, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? Um, so you can really, really just take anything and do, uh, you know, all kinds of neat things. And we're talking about clocks tonight. Ways to make cool, decorative, uh, you know, clocks. Uh, you know, um, 
just just use your imagination. They could be anything. They could be ornate designs, florist designs. They could be animals, plants, tigers, lions, and bears. Oh my, so many clock designs that you can do. And then, you know, they sell. Put a keyhole on the back of it, hang it up, or just a just a regular sawtooth hanger, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, do what you gotta do. Type of deal. Right, right. Okay, that was my last example, guys. We are gonna call it a night. Hopefully, that was entertainment or informative, and um, make some clocks. All right. Until next time, I will see you soon.